Hello and welcome to the Thread to Men podcast. My name is Taylor and I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and this is a podcast about all things fiber related. So I mostly touch on the subjects of knitting and spinning yarn um, from wool that I usually process from a fleece. And I actually have in front of me to show you this week a finished spin. Um, and this is fiber that I bought at the Maryland State Shape and Wool Festival. Um, I'm having trouble grabbing it because it's two skeins. One is about 100 grams and the other is about um, 50. So together I have, it's actually an approximate 140 grams. Um, and it's a little bit damp still. It's still drying. I usually put my skeins kind of on top of my air purifier <laughs> to dry, but that's actually where you're sitting right now so that we can record together. So, um, here's a close up if I can get you one. And this is fiber that was about a five inch staple, meaning it was about five inches long. So it's uh, really easy to spin, to be honest, and very fine wool. So it carries a lot of natural oils, lanolin, um, that you kind of have to strip out from the fiber before you process. And I wash my fleeces on my stove with hot water and a very gentle shampoo, uh, one without sulfates. So it doesn't really change the chemical structure of the lanolin and it's really, really gentle on the fiber. So the fiber that I spin into yarn, it actually still has a little bit of that lanolin left on it. Um, sometimes that makes it easier to spin. Sometimes that makes it a little more challenging if the right detergent isn't used. So I'm always careful to use really gentle shampoo, um, shampoo without sulfates. So I then dyed the fiber uh, and with this fiber, I, I dyed two batches, uh, one with Black Eyed Susan's and another with Black Eyed Susan's and a mordant. And a mordant changes uh, sometimes the pigment of the, of the natural dye material. So one is a little bit more gray and one is a little more yellow. And these are two um, single spins, so two bobbins of single ply yarn that I made. Um, and I actually just finished in a previous episode, I showed you a three ply yarn I made with the same fiber. I happen to have run out of one of the three plied colors and this was all the fiber I had remaining from those spins. So I finished those singles earlier this week, maybe late last week, and then I finally plied them to make a two ply. Um, so with 150 grams of a really fine gauge yarn, I might make something like a tank top. Um, or I could maybe even create, I don't know, with 150 grams, I might be able to make a bra and like panty set maybe. Um, today, uh, except for my sweatpants, which I'm wearing because <laughs> it's still quite cold, um, I'm making, I'm wearing an entirely handmade wardrobe today, which I'm really proud of. And I really... I'm enjoying it. So I'll, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing really quick and we'll move on with the rest of this episode. But I wanted to show you this nice new skein of yarn I just made and what it might become. I have it right over here, the three ply yarn. So these are like sisters. They're honestly not that different. I could probably get away with using this if I ran out of yardage. <laughs> Maybe for like uh, like a cuff or something that's like a contrast color, the difference wouldn't be strongly noticed. But obviously this one's going to be thicker. So um, these will be um, companion pieces perhaps in the future. Anyway, exciting stuff. Um, I'm wearing the founding shawl that I uploaded to Ravelry. It's a paid for pattern. I really, really love to wear this. Um, especially in the spring and the fall when it's like kind of warm, but still kind of cold. And I'm wearing it with my ranunculus, which wears much different than it appeared when I finished the project. Um, when I finished knitting it, it was just to the wrist. It kind of felt like there was room if I wore bracelets or something to kind of dangle. And then the more I, more I wear it, it kind of fits to the 
three-dimensional form and it's shrunk to my elbows so it's now a three-quarter length sweater um, but one thing I really like about it is I lean into my elbows a lot and it's nice to have a garment that's so fine and delicate that isn't going to be damaged by that so I'm actually kind of okay with that um, and it's nice and light anyway so I don't really need full sleeves um, I hope it's not undoing but it kind of also flows open right above where these kind of tie. It's loosened up since I got dressed this morning. I intentionally made this pattern um, quite large for my frame so that it would be an appropriate size for the largest bust size to also be able to wrap it and wear it in the same fashion. I felt like that was important. So I made this quite um, bigger than other like haps that you might wear. Um, but I like how I have so much room to kind of decide where I want to layer the folds. Like right now I have it folded in and it gives it a nice cushy kind of neck warming element. So anyway, and then I'm wearing a dress. The pattern is by So Liberated, but I'm forgetting the name of the pattern. I'll just put it um, down here for you to see. And we are now joined by Star Baby Moonchild. If you have not met Star Baby, sorry, but she was our first cat to adopt. So I'm going to show you my dress real quick. It is um, a pattern that I modified in that it's regularly reversible, and I made uh, an, a reversible one previously. And I used this linen cotton blend fabric, which is kind of like a medium weight, I would guess. And I did that for both the layers so that it was linen on both sides. And it was, it's honestly a really heavy, heavy dress, um, which I don't mind, but I wanted to switch it up and try to modify it. And I decided to make it um, non-reversible so I could use any fabric I wanted in the front here because this would have to be a reversible piece. And I added the side pockets, which match that panel, um, to the same front piece as the one with the other pockets. So this dress has four pockets instead of um, only two on each side. And then I modified the bottom of this by creating just one back panel. And I sewed the two front panels up the side so that it's not a full slip. It's just a slip in the front. Um, and that does mean that the top back panel is like loose at the, the end. So sometimes getting inside of this dress, I have to intentionally slide in front of the thing, but I think that's part of just getting dressed. I think a lot of dresses are like that. I worked at a store that sold dresses and sometimes they were like that, but anyway, I did so, um, this a while ago but I'm just it's warming up now so I'm excited to put some plants out into the ground and I wanted to wear something easy to work in so I have just a little bit more to show you and then we'll go out to the garden but I sewed a couple masks these were made by a pair of pants that split <laughs> um, of my spouse and I was trying to make masks that fit both him and me but when I would make a mask that fit his face it wouldn't also fit his head. And I was using these elastics that are kind of like a nylon band. Uh, oh, they're like a nylon tube. And I really love these because they never get stuck in the hair. But um, I just cut it and clipped it to both ends and it didn't fit him. So because it fit my head but not my face, I just added these two kind of little tucks and sewed that off. So that's one way you could tailor make a mask to fit your face really, really well. I feel like I'm breathing straight through the front of this when I wear it. And it's um, it's kind of a heavy twill, two layers of heavy twill. So I'll just put it on for you to see. I hope you can hear me through the mask, but it also has a pipe cleaner here so it conforms to the face all the way across. These bands do pull on my ears a little bit, so it's really not the most comfortable mask because I feel the sensation of pulling my ears forward. You can probably see that they're pulled forward. So even though it wears fine on the 
breathing wise it's just not the most comfortable mask so I tried again to make a mask that fit Brian and I used the other alternative I had to the hair ties because I can't really make these longer as I have this leather cording and the pattern that I used I'll link to below I did the research to start making masks really 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 early on um right when I got laid off from work so it was like mid-march and then a huge explosion of like resources are out online on making masks and I watched another video I'll link that one too about which mask was the best mask design and then I didn't even use that but <laughs> anyway I uh this pattern does in the instructions it does ask you to loop the elastic through um and I have elastic I had elastic in my stash which is forever old I don't know if it's like about to bust but um it's white and it wouldn't match my black mask so I used this leather cording trying it out and it actually works um I feel like I could have modified it to be a little bit looser and actually these two sides aren't perfect but you actually don't notice they're not the perfect uh symmetrical length but you really don't notice once it's on and with this one I did a different sort of pleat where I just folded it once over in the center I kind of wish I did it symmetrical I just folded it into one side kind of like a z um I don't know if I could have done it better but this one also has the pipe cleaner through the front and I'll just put it on really quick. You do have to kind of loop one ear with this one because of the leather strap and kind of, it, it reminds me of the section cups that hold up wire and things like sponges and stuff. But once it's on, yeah, this one's a little smaller too because I was more modest with my seam allowance. But the one thing I don't like about this mask is the way that the um, band kind of pulls this fabric in being through the center of it. I feel like I would like this more if it attached at both ends and it pulled straight like the other one does. It just is a neater shape, but um, I'm not complaining and I actually really like this mask. It fits a lot more comfortably on my face. The only thing I notice is that when I'm talking and my jaw is moving, that's when I feel pressure on the back of my ears. I know there are masks with ties too, and um, I actually have a bunch of thrift store found binding, black binding, and I could easily make a more simple mask too with that. Uh, I just don't want to wrap them around my hair. <laughs> okay, so. Let's go outside. Is that it? I think that's everything. I've not been, uh, I've not been knitting a lot. I'm watching a ton of YouTube. I just discovered, okay, I just discovered, um, this YouTube channel you might have heard of. It's made by Shane Dawson, and I love it. It is just my best friend right now <laughs> in this kind of lockdown, um, social distancing world we're in it's like the tv that i'm watching really hardcore so i i just can't i feel like my mind's blown to a whole new world i watched a video by, by jeffree star who's like now i just feel i just i don't know the words but um needless to say i adore jeffree star <laughs> He did a video of his grandmother's, like, 103-year-old grandmother's beauty routine, and it was hilarious, and it's pretty much everything that I do to get ready, so I kind of felt like I shouldn't try to live in the dark any longer and know it is unhealthy and unacceptable to wear products on my face that are maybe 12 years old. I don't know what, like, I know that the packaging says things, but who really buys all of their makeup every single year? I don't know who does that. So apparently I do that now because I just, I was like, I don't know. It's, I think it's, we're all looking for some comfort and, um, I've been like hyper frugal for five going on six weeks now. And I'm like, you deserve it. It's such a, 
I just think I'm consuming so much media. I like have this desire for consumption and I gave in, I gave in. And I made now three impulse purchases that I'll just tell you about really quick and then we'll go to the garden, okay? Um, one is a pack of seed, not a pack. It's a $24 seed haul, which I'll show you when it arrives. I got some flowers, annuals mostly, and a few vegetables that I realized my seed stock was quite old. I don't know why I hoard seeds, but I'm giving up that ghost and I'm just buying some okra to plant <laughs> at the last minute. And um, so that was like my second thing where I've told you this before. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that when I spend a little bit of money, I kind of just keep doing it because it feels good. And then I'm like, stop it. I never get myself in trouble financially, but it's just like the impulse doesn't stop until the first thing arrives. <laughs> Almost. So I, knowing how frugal I need to be right now, I thought I would do a, a little beauty haul of kind of starting over and giving myself a clean slate in terms of skincare and makeup. I'm not saying that this is gonna be the stuff that I buy. I'm just saying that I got some samples, some sample size stuff, and I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna see what works. And I'm gonna step it up because I'm going to be 35 years old and this skin doesn't just care for itself. It does actually, but like you need to take care of it. So kind of really excited. I think one of my packages is going to arrive today or tomorrow. So I'm going to try to record some like beauty footage of me and Brian to share with you when the time is right. I'm not going to go full on beauty channel with you here, but I hope that you're going to be down for the ride and will stay subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> um, okay, let's go down to the garden. Oh, I'm plugged into the wall. Going downstairs. Do you like my hair today? I call it wearing my hair like a hat. All right, we're just getting through the house. Going to the backyard. Let's do a quick little garden tour. My collard greens are doing real well and nasturtiums are hanging on. I should probably water that container. It's a little dry today, but the rain is coming. I have yarrow here. It's definitely a little drier than earlier. And um, some black-eyed Susans and echinacea growing. A flower in the coming months. I have garlic and these are calendula seedlings. These are a new blueberry plant I just put out this year, so they're very young. And I'm worried we won't get any fruit because I have just two others and I'm not sure that they're gonna flower at the same time. So I might have to get another variety so that they can be pollinated. But here's the second blueberry bush. And the third I actually stepped on and I broke, um, but there was still a second stem that had no leaves on it and it's growing leaves back, so. This one's gonna be off to a slow start. So I got a bunch of garlic in this bed. I really didn't plant the garlic that heavy this year. Um, there's more yarrow. Looks like this gets a little more sun maybe. It's uh, about to bloom. I love how these look like hairy nugs. <laughs> but um, some peppermint and lemon balm in this patch put out some lettuces real early. These got real beat up, but they're they're hanging on. They're going to probably flourish. And these are this is kind of a random zone of garlic and collard greens and got some pea shoots popping up here and there. I have six real big collard green plants among the blueberry. And uh, this is some horseradish here. So this is actually edible in the leaves. It kind of tastes like, you know, not unlike radish greens, spicy, um, but with that horseradish flavor. And then I have more black-eyed Susans 
and this giant forsythia. I only trim the back side here to kind of give it a flatter edge. I really, I'm really team no trim on the forsythia plant. Um, over here, I have a black raspberry or black wild black raspberry. I think, let's see, yeah. And I just put up some sister canes. So next year we'll have some fruit. And then back here, I'm gonna plant some of those seeds I just bought. So I'm gonna put sunflowers along this fence, hopefully. Looks like this spot does get some afternoon sun, so should be able to grow some blooms. This is my blackberry bush. I trimmed it back a whole lot in the fall. I wanted to give it more airflow. And this is a bird bath we inherited, which we've kept. I and mean, we moved it to this area. This is a big, nice St. John's wort plant. Um, the bees just love to pollinate this. And it was really starting to extend out into the yard, so I cut into that straight line and I added a semicircle here. So I'm gonna plant some blooms in front of that to give it a little more flowers into the yard. And these are my my raspberries. So they're all, oh, this one's flowering already. Seems so soon, but it's that time of year. That's the garden tour. Got some nettles, I just harvested a bunch of those. More black-eyed Susans. And uh, cilantro. So, that's it. So like I said, I placed a couple orders on on a couple websites. Um, one I never heard of before the other day, and um, the first is Elf, which I have heard of. I've bought a, a shadow palette from like Alta at the checkout line real quick when I was just like getting something basic, but um, sorry, my handshakes, I'm not used to holding this. I've noticed I have these like wrinkles forming and that's one reason why I'm kind of upgrading my face situation because anytime I put on makeup it just kind of so we're tr we're gonna try to fix that um right so I don't have super high expectations but I'm trying I'm just trying out some things and oh my god I just realized I did like I bought like two more things so there's the e.l.f. purchase. It was like skincare, primer, basic stuff. I think I was like really hyper conservative. I might have spent like $48 or something, 60. I think it was actually $68, um, which is a lot for me. But if I were at Sephora, that's like two things. So I feel like in terms of trying new things, it, I was... I was really smart about spending. And then I discovered this skincare line called Ordinary, which was from a YouTube channel that I'll just link to because honestly, I learned so much from this person's sharing of knowledge. And then the third purchase was one I've really been anticipating and I just was obsessing over it and I realized I wasn't gonna stop until I just did it and I went on Morphe's website and I bought the Conspiracy Palette by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star so <laughs> um I don't even know what I don't know how to wear eyeshadow or like if I want to look like I'm wearing eyeshadow um but I do want to fix my face and maybe put on concealer uh, which I haven't done since like high school but um, I just, I feel like I'm alone with my face anyway, so I should at least learn how to put on makeup while I don't have to go out in public. Like, what better time to learn how to put on makeup? <laughs> and then when I have to be in, like, a public space, I'll just feel a little bit more confident because I know I got my face on. So, I'm gonna just share that experience with you. If not just this moment... I'll share with you my experiences with the products I buy in case that's interesting. I'll try to keep it really short and always include info on what I'm making at the top of the video in case you're not there for beauty reviews or whatever. I'm sure it's not going to become a full 
beauty review channel, but Shane Dawson is a really inspiring maker. I'm just so excited to have this whole backlog of things to watch and conspiracies. Like, how have I never found this? I just feel so alive. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just want to thank you for being here and hanging out with me. Uh, you can find me on social media and get connected with me there. Uh, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry and Instagram. So you can find me on either of those platforms. I mentioned in a previous episode about building a Ravelry group. And, um, you know, go ahead and join that group. We're doing a knit-along that I never plug. We're doing a knit-along. There's going to be a prize. Anything that you want to add to the Ravelry group thread in our knit along, share it. I just wanna know what you're making, whatever it is. Like, I don't even care. There's no whatever here. So <laughs> thanks so much for watching and take care.